define the capital structure, break it down into its components, and learn how a company can optimize its funding and assets while we look into the real world example of General Electric. What is a capital structure, and why do you want to know about it? The capital structure refers to the amount of debt and equity the firm employs to fund its operations and finance the assets it owns or uses. It's generally expressed as a debt to equity ratio, which tells us how leveraged the firm is and therefore how reliant on either debt or equity the firm is for its continued operation. As potential business owners, we want to know how the business is actually funded, so we want to know if it's sustainable and optimal. Can the firm be funded at a cheaper rate? Are the projects the firm undertakes creating maximum value? Showing this with a diagram, it becomes more clear that each section is like a piece of a puzzle. To fund the assets, the firm needs a combination of debt and equity. Assets include all of the resources owned by the business and can help produce revenue for the firm. Equity is the ownership stake invested in the business. An equity holder owns a portion of the business in return for a capital investment the business uses towards its operations. Debt is the credit component of the business's funding and is a promise to repay an amount borrowed with an agreed upon interest rate. Sometimes the equity component will be larger than debt and sometimes the debt will be larger than the equity. Over the next few slides, we'll discuss how a firm makes the decision of how to balance these components. In funding a firm, it's important to understand that each funding component will have a different cost to the firm as it carries a different risk profile to the holder of the security or financial instrument. With higher risks comes higher rewards. A key rule of investment is getting paid for the risk you take, which is how investors earn profits. It's important to know that risk comes in many forms, but a focus for us today is default risk, the risk of a company going out of business. If the business fails, we want to know who gets paid first and therefore who is the lowest risk. As equity holders get the largest payoff, if the business is a massive success, its value will increase a lot and the value of the stock will rise. They will inevitably face the higher risk. The investor owns a portion of the business and if it fails, they get paid back last, if there's anything left. Preferred equity holders have a guaranteed dividend level and therefore hold less risk than common equity holders. On the other hand, if the business does fail, it must first pay off its loan obligations and then its bonds. This concept is known as seniority of obligations. Effectively, which security holders have the first legal right to assets? Due to the differing risk profiles of equity and debt, they will have different costs to the firm. When analyzing the capital structure and its funding, a firm will want to know the most optimal funding method, the levels of debt and equity, which cost the lowest amount. When considering the changing levels of debt and equity, a firm needs to consider two key concepts, the debt to equity ratio and the weighted average cost of capital, or WAC. The debt to equity ratio is basically the relationship between debt and equity used to fund the firm. It's the financial ratio that indicates the relative proportion of shareholders' equity and debt used to finance a company's assets, and it's calculated by dividing the total debt by the total equity. If the business increases the debt component, it increases the leverage and therefore also the credit and default risk of the business. As the business is legally obligated to repay interest on its debt on a regular basis, higher levels of debt means higher regular payments, and if the business fails one payment, then it will default. Therefore, if the business increases its debt levels, the cost of debt will increase. Conversely, if the business was fully funded by equity, the equity holders would demand a large payoff as they're taking on a huge amount of risk and are the only holders. They want some new projects to be funded by debt to avoid continuous new shares, which would lower their share value. The weighted average cost of capital is the total cost of funding for the firm if they're using both equity funding and debt funding. If the first wants to be optimally funded, it will ensure the WAC is at its lowest level, which means that the cost of funding is at its lowest. The WAC is calculated by calculating the cost of equity and the cost of debt, adding these together. To lower the WAC, the business simply needs to modify its debt to equity ratio until the WAC reaches its lowest level. To increase the debt component and lower the equity component, the business could borrow money by taking out loans or going out to the capital market to issue debt while using the proceeds of this to complete share buybacks. On the other hand, the business could want to lower debt levels compared to equity levels. The business could buy more shares and use the proceeds of this to repay their loans. 
If we switch to a well-known public company, we can put to work what we know. We can compare General Electric to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, a large US index, to understand their capital structure. We can see that debt levels have been increasing over the last few years, to a level over 70% by the end of 2018. However, to understand if this debt increase has been useful, we should also look at the weighted average cost of capital of the firm, the chart on the right of the screen. The cost of funding for GE has been increasing throughout this period, which suggests that these massive debt levels are not beneficial to the firm, as the increased risk is reflected in the increased cost of funding. Further, there are large outstanding issues at GE in their debt and company structure, which will have raised their cost of funding as their credit risk rating has diminished over time. What do you think of the capital structure of GE? Does it look sustainable? Let us know in the comments, and if you want us to look into GE in more depth.